In section 5.6, we'll be focusing on proving a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. We will have to use prior knowledge that we learn from sections 5.4 and 5.5 for this lesson. At this time, I'd like you to draw a picture of a parallelogram where it says parallelogram picture and label the parallelogram with all of the properties that you know to be true. We should be labeling that both pairs of opposite sides of the parallelogram are parallel. We also know that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. We know that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. And finally, what we talked about in section 5.5, we know that the diagonals bisect each other. So you should have drawn a parallelogram and labeled it similarly to this one. There are five different ways to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Let's talk about the first one. The first one says, if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And this is just the reverse of the definition of a parallelogram. So if we have a four-sided figure, and we know that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, that's enough to say that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. The second way says that if we get both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Now this is simply the converse of one of the properties that we know to be true of a parallelogram. Let's talk about why number two works. If we're giving both pairs of opposite sides congruent, we have a parallelogram. But by definition of a parallelogram, we need both pairs of opposite sides to be parallel. If we draw in this diagonal and use reflexive property on that side, we get two triangles congruent by side, side, side. Then we can say that these two angles are congruent by CPCTC, and these two angles are congruent by CPCTC. Both are alternate interior angles, and we know if those are congruent, we get parallel lines, which then ultimately leaves us with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. The third way states that if one pair, this one's a little different, it says if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are both parallel and congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So I want you to watch up here. If we have a quadrilateral and we know that we have one pair of opposite sides, both parallel and congruent, that's enough to say that it's a parallelogram. So you can see the black tick marks there. That would work. And you can also have it on the other sides as well. So if we have the red, we have one pair of opposite sides, both parallel and congruent, that's enough to say that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. But how come number three works? So we have one pair of opposite sides that are both parallel and congruent, and we need both pairs of opposite sides to be parallel by definition of a parallelogram. Let's draw in this diagonal. We create two triangles as a result. Working with those parallel sides, we could get these alternate interior angles congruent. Using reflexive property on that shared side, we get that those two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. Using CPCTC on these angles, we now know that alternate interior angles are congruent, which means these sides are parallel as well, which ultimately means both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. The fourth way to show that a quadrilateral is parallelogram states that if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. That's the converse of a property that we know about a parallelogram already. Let's talk about why number four works. We know that the diagonals bisect each other, but we need both pairs of opposite sides to be parallel by definition of a parallelogram. We could say that these vertical angles are congruent, which means that the two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. Using CPCTC on these angles, we get that those opposite sides are parallel. And then using CPCTC on those segments, we get that those opposite sides are congruent. So we have one pair of opposite sides, both parallel and congruent, which ultimately leads to a parallelogram. And last but not least, if both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. That's the converse of another property of a parallelogram. So we've already learned about properties of parallelograms. For these, we're taking just pretty much the converses of those. Let's move on to the first example, which is a proof. Here, we're given that ACDF is a parallelogram. 
So we know that that large figure is a parallelogram, and we're also told that we have some congruent angles, so I'm putting tick marks on those. Now let's just kind of map it out. In the end, we want to prove that this small figure, FBCE, is a parallelogram. So we're starting off with the big parallelogram, and we want to result in the smaller figure inside of the larger one to be a parallelogram. So we're going from big to small here. Now let's go ahead and write down our givens. We know that because of the congruent angles that we're given, we already have a pair of congruent angles within those two triangles, AFB and DCE. So let's see if we could prove those two triangles congruent. Since we know that the large figure is a parallelogram, we can state that those opposite sides, AF and DC, are congruent. And you can write this just saying, since we have a parallelogram, we know opposite sides are congruent. So the reason is, in a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. That'll give us another pair of congruent sides within the triangles. Okay, so we have angle side. Hmm. Well, use side, angle side, we would have to say that FB is congruent to EC, and we can't say that. To use angle side angle, we would have to say that angle A is congruent to angle D. And we can't say that. Because similarly to step three, in a parallelogram, we know that opposite angles are congruent. So that allows us to say that those two triangles, triangle AFB, so if I labeled it triangle AFB, I have to label it in the same order for the other one. So if I labeled it AFB, I have to label the next one DCE. So those two triangles are congruent by angle side angle, which we mentioned in steps two, three, and four of our proof. Now since the triangles are congruent, we can use CPCTC on the yellow segments that we have highlighted there, on segments FB and EC. If we get those segments congruent, we have one pair of opposite sides congruent in our quadrilateral. So we're on our way to saying that that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, so we have one pair of opposite sides congruent. So now, if we think back to the different ways to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, we can either get those opposite sides parallel, so FB and EC. Um, I don't know if we have any congruent angles to work with there with a the transversal. Or we can say that FE is congruent to BC. If we could get these other opposite sides congruent, the red ones that I'm highlighting here, we'd have both pairs of opposite sides congruent, which would be enough to say that that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. I think we can more um, easily get the red segments congruent. So let's take a look at our given information. We know that that large figure is a parallelogram. So we can say that segments AC and FD are congruent for the same reason as three. Now those segments are too large though, so if we could subtract off the segments that are not highlighted, segments AB and ED, we can then get the red segments FE and BC congruent. But before we subtract off those segments AB and ED, we have to say that they're congruent by CPCTC since they're sides of the congruent triangles, corresponding sides of those congruent triangles. So we want to mention those segments are congruent first. Then we can use the subtraction property and subtract off those congruent segments from congruent segments to say that FE is congruent to BC, which then gives us both pairs of opposite sides congruent in the quadrilateral. So we can say that FBCE is a parallelogram because, one of our new reasons that we wrote on the first page, if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Let's take a look at example two. This is an application problem. So I'm going to fill in the given information in the diagram. So we're told that that segment QA has a length of 30, that yellow segment there. And let's go ahead and fill in everything else. Now, in the end, we want to determine if this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So what method do you think we're going to use here? Right away, I'd be thinking, well, we're given information about those pieces of the diagonal. So if we can prove that the diagonals bisect each other, and that's enough to say that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Now, when coming up with our equation, we have to come up with the equation that we know for a fact is true. And since we're given that the length of that yellow segment QA is 30, and we know that those two pieces, 2x minus 5 and x plus x minus 7 plus 2, make it up, we can set those equal to 30. We can add them up and set them equal to 30. Once we get that x is 10, let's substitute 10 back in for all of the x's in the diagram. So if we substitute it in for segments qz and za, we get that each 
segment has a length of 15, which means that that large diagonal is bisected. And then if we substitute it in for the other pieces, we get that UZ and ZD each have a length of 10, which means that that other diagonal, UD, is also bisected. So both diagonals bisect each other, meaning that this is a parallelogram. We'll pick up with the second part of the notes in just a moment.